After learning the nine reasons you should start your Qiyam Layl right away, it is time to share with you eight practices that will grant you 99% of assurance to wake up for your Qiyam Layl easily, inshallah ta'ala. I know, I know, you are excited and can't wait to know what those practices are. But first, why not you get your cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to another episode of the good news brought to you by gsalam.net and al Bushra by gsalam. This episode of the good news supplements the previous one which featured nine reasons why you should start your Qiyamul Layl right away or be consistent in it if you lack some consistency in it. It is highly recommended that you watch that first if you haven't already. Link in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's dive into the eight practices for waking up for Qiyamul Layl successfully and easily, inshallah. First, have a good sleep. Yes, that's right. Have a good sleep. Besides your faith, your iman, the one thing that you shouldn't compromise is your sleep. Having a good sleep is a treasure, whether we know it or not. And I'm sure we all know that. When you have a good sleep, you wake up fresh, you wake up focused, you wake up happy, and you end up productive. Simply put, when you have a good sleep, it is a clear indication that you are healthy. Here, one thing we should be clear about is that having a good sleep doesn't mean to oversleep. It rather means sleeping at the right time in order to be able to wake up for some Qiyamul Layl or any other important activity for that matter. And that takes us to the second practice, that is sleep early. Oh yes, if you want to have a good sleep, especially that you want to do Qiyamul Layl, then the best thing to do is to sleep early. That is after Isha prayers, unless something really important engages you for a while. That is exactly the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will go to sleep right after Isha unless he has something urgent to attend to. So, unless you are one of those who do their Qiyamul Layl before going to bed, which is an option of doing Qiyamul Layl, then you are encouraged to sleep early. And in order to knock off into a deep and good sleep, make sure that you take a light dinner. Taking light dinner is essential in waking up for Qiyamul Layl. Your internal organs need some rest at night instead of being busy processing and digesting heavy food. The less pressure you put them to, the better digestion they make at night, resulting to you having that good sleep and waking up fresh. So when you have a heavy dinner, your internal organs will remain busy processing and that will result you waking up. When you eventually wake up, you wake up tired. Well, you couldn't sleep well. So it is not a secret that when one takes a heavy dinner, his Qiyamul Layl is affected. In fact, even if he has already developed consistency in Qiyamul Layl, he may still wake up, but he will wake up with a heavy body. He will wake up with heavy eyes. He will wake up half conscious. So the secret is very simple. Eat light. And to make that more practical, don't eat late. Yes, that's right. Similar to taking light dinner is to eat early, to take our dinner early. That is an hour or two hours before one goes to bed. Most importantly, don't sleep with full stomach. Ya akhi, a light dinner taken right before going to bed will affect your sleep. What more if it happens to be heavy? That is because your internal organ, organs will spend the night digesting, as we mentioned earlier. Now, our next essential practice to help you wake up for Qiyamul Layl easily is to exercise and regularly. Exercising regularly is very important for the good health of anyone. In fact, 
This is what I call the fourth element. Sadly, many Muslims neglect the fourth element. Check out this video to find out what the fourth element is all about. It is important for the Muslim to keep up with fitness regardless of the little time we put in. Five minutes a day is better than none at all. Ten minutes is certainly better than five minutes. Fifteen minutes a day is better than ten. Half an hour is certainly better than fifteen minutes. And there you go. Whichever one takes, whether it is an hour or half an hour a day, whether it is 20 minutes, 15, 10, or 5, you will feel it. Your mood will definitely be better. Not only your Qiyamul Layl will be smoother than usual for those who already do Qiyamul Layl, your relationship with your surrounding will also improve. So get out of the bed now and work out inside the room. Go on on the treadmill if you have one. Pick up that jump rope if you have one or go out of the house and hit the road. Jog or run. Just do exercise. Sweat it out. Don't make that mistake. The mistake of, I prefer to exercise with my friend or friends. If you want to wait for your friend or your team to be ready and exercise with you, you will likely start. But even when you start, it won't last for long. Your Qiyamul Layl is your personal priority and you need to do the exercise you need to do in order to make it happen with consistency. So, let's go. Next, eat halal. Eating halal food that is made or bought with income earned from halal keeps your body light. You may be a big-sized person, yet you will be active and productive. As much as we should eat halal, it matters a lot who cooks for us the halal food. For instance, will you eat without saying Bismillah at the beginning? Most likely the answer is no, right? Now, will you eat from a person who doesn't say Bismillah or doesn't even know how to say Bismillah or mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they cook? Don't get me wrong, as Muslims, we are allowed to eat from the cooking of Christians and Jews, provided the ingredients of their cooking is halal. It is not haram, in other words. However, eating from the one who says Bismillah is certainly better than from the one who does not say Bismillah. The point I'm trying to make here is that a food cooked with Bismillah before starting, while staring, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is certainly more blessed <laughs> than the one that is cooked by any Tom, Dick and Harry outside there, even with halal certification. Above all that, the halal certification and whatnot is to ensure we provide all that from halal income. And our ability to wake up for Qiyamul Layl will happen like a miracle, inshallah. So far, we have covered six practices. However, the next practice is the most crucial and the most important of all, and that is to intend to wake up for Qiyamul Layl. Oh yes, all the above mentioned practices are actually conventional wisdom practices with the exception of the halal part. Whoever wants a healthy lifestyle will take care of their food, will exercise, and ultimately monitor their sleeping habit. In fact, many non-Muslims are good at that, than many Muslims. So with all that, in addition to ensuring halal income and halal consumption, the Muslim must intend Qiyamul Layl in order to be able to observe Qiyamul Layl and create a habit out of it. Once you have got all that set, you are likely to have already started your Qiyamul Layl, MashaAllah. But don't ignore the last practice I'm going to mention, and that is to start with less. One of the reasons why many of us give up Qiyamul Layl easily or any other activities for that matter is that we have the wrong perception about it. We have the good intention, yes, but we set highly unrealistic goals to achieve. Thus, many of us fail to keep up with it for more than a few days. 
the suggestion is that you start with five minutes. And then after a week or so, if you feel like increasing, then increase to 10 minutes and then to 15 minutes and then to 30 minutes. And once you become intrinsically motivated, then you can increase up to the capacity and circumstances you find yourself in. Don't start with one hour duration on your first day. Yes, while there is possibility you will resume the next day, you are likely missing the next day than resuming. Yes, it is important to know that developing a habit for a consistent Qiyamul Layl is a lifetime project. Therefore, it is wise to build it gradually in a way that you can actually withstand. So, it, this is to say consistency here is to ensure doing it every day or very frequently. And to do that, start less. Now, let's wrap up. I did include intending Qiyamul Layl or making the intention for Qiyamul Layl in the practices we have covered. But I did not mention being sincere to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is simply because the insincere don't do Qiyamul Layl. So it is an unspoken common sense that whoever does Qiyamul Layl and does not record it live to show the world or does not tell the world about his Qiyamul Layl, he is already having the sincerity in doing so. So there was no need for that to be indicated whatsoever in this video. Also, the practices mentioned in this video are subjective at the end of the day, but they work for many people, if not all. Therefore, I humbly request that you share it with your loved ones if you have watched to this point. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us what it takes to overcome our inner evils and the outer evil or devils out there and make us among the community of, of Qiyamul Layl. If you have followed me to this point, then I hope that this video has inspired you in a way or another. And I pray that tonight your Qiyamul Layl is going to be different even if you haven't yet started all the practices suggested or recommended in this video. Do not forget to check the links provided in the description below for more related content. And yes, do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Until we meet in the next I leave you in Allah's protection. See you and see you in Jannah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.